Hello everybody and thank you for attending this presentation today at ICSI 2021. I'm Jordan Sami from the University of Luxembourg and I'm presenting a work in collaboration with Professor Alexandre Bartel from the University of Umea and with Professor Tega Wende Francois Dassis Bissende <coughs> from the University of Luxembourg and Professor Jacqueline as well from the University of Luxembourg. The paper is entitled REC, uh, Revealing Atypical Intercomponent Communication in Android Apps. But before diving into the core, uh, the core subject of this work, let me just remind you how Android Apps work. Android apps are made uh, of different components, for example, activities for the graphical user interface and services, for example, which are background tasks. And such activities, for example, here activity one, can communicate with other components uh, with, with passing messages. And those messages are called intents, which are composite objects which can carry different kind of values, for example, integers, strings, or other structures. This is for typical intercomponent communication. How is it performed? So here on the left, you can see the code of a main activity and the code of a target activity on the right. So we just instantiate a new intent by specifying the target here, an explicit target, which is the target activity. And we can set some value into this composite object, the intent. And to communicate with the target activity, we call uh, an ICC method. And ICC stands for intercomponent communication. Here, the method is start activity. It is not an explicit call to the onCreate method of the target activity, but the system will resolve this uh, link. There are many other different ICC methods that are well documented uh, in the Android documentation. For example, here you can see all the, 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 the ICC method for the broadcast receiver component, start activity, or the services. Those are well documented, as I already said, and ha have already been studied in the state of the art. So it means they are modeled. For example, if you check the paper ICTA or Amandroid, they are taken into account for data flow analysis, for example. But we found that other kind of method, which we called a typical ICC method, can be used to perform uh, intercompany communication in Android apps. For example, here, on the right, this is the same code as the previous slide, but on the left, this is not exactly the same. We still create the intent and put some value into the, the intent, but then we wrap the intent into what, what is called a pending intent. Pending intent have already been studied in the state of the art, but not in this context. For example, here, we just retrieve the SMS manager for sending SMS uh, to another device, for example, and then we just trigger, we call the send text message with dummy values, but the pending intent. And when we call send text message, it will happen exactly the same as earlier, meaning that the system will resolve the link that is put into the pending intent, the intent, which is the target activity. So it will call the onCreate method of the target activity. This is clearly overlooked by the state of the art, and this is a threat to validity. Why? Because if we do not consider those links uh, for static analyzers, we will miss a lot of data flow and information. So this is what we propose to cope in this work. So we search for a maximum of atypical ICC method into the Android framework by doing a comprehensive study of the Android SDK from version 3 to 29. So the idea was to look for different objects uh, as intent, for example, pending intent or intent sender, and to look for method that takes those kind of objects as, uh, as parameters. So in total, we found more than 100, exactly 111 methods, uh, which, we called, uh, which we called atypical intercomponent communication methods. For example, here we can see that by setting an alarm, you can trigger another component. By requesting uh, location updates, you can trigger another component. And if it's not modeled, 
we lose precision with static analysis. So we also measure, measured the, the pervasiveness of those atypical ICC methods in Android apps by considering goodware and malware to see if there are any differences. And also by only taking into account the developer code, so without libraries and with libraries. So we can see that on average per application, there are almost six uh, atypical ICC method in goodware and almost 11 in malware, considering only the developer code. So those are pervasive. And if we can take into account libraries, this is even more pervasive. So we propose an approach called REC, which stands for Revealing Atypical Intercomponent Communication. So the big idea, the core idea of REC, is to take an APK as input and to output another APK which has been patched with typical or let's say well-documented ICC methods to be modeled by static analyzers. So the first step is to load the APK into Suit and Flowdroid for having a first model of the application to perform static analysis. And then we leverage IC3, uh, which can model and infer some values of composite objects such as intents, pending intents, and intent sender at what we call the program point of interest. And those program point of interest are the atypical ICC methods. And when we have the values and the possible targets, we have to retrieve the intent. So step three, we perform a backward static anal analysis to retrieve the possible intents that can be used for this uh, intercomponent communication. And then step four, we instrument the application by adding new statements that correspond to possible typical uh, ICC method. For example, start activity or start service, depending on the type of the target. And then we repack the application to have a new APK that can be used for existing static analyzers. We assessed a REC by leveraging IC3 on two sets of applications, so 5,000 of goodware and 5,000 on malware. And we can see that before REC, we found a certain number of links of ICC links in Android apps. But when we apply REC and then we run IC3 on those applications, we find more, more ICC links. So it means, uh, it means that REC is able to find new links between components. More than 25% in goodware and more than 60% in malware. We also performed additional experiments with benchmark application to see if uh, REC was able to boost existing uh, data, data leak detection uh, static analyzers, for example, ICTA and Amandroid, and we have seen that those have been boosted by REC. And the same with EPIC, which its um, ICC vulnerability detection module has already been boosted uh, by uh, REC. So you can have more information in the paper if you can see the details of these experiments. As a static analyzer, of course, REC has some limitations. Uh, also, uh, we uh, may have missed some uh, atypical ICC method during the comprehensive study. This is possible. And also we rely on existing, uh, existing third-party tools, such as IC3, uh, to infer the composite value. So these are some limitations. And if you want more information, you can also refer to the paper. So this concludes uh, my presentation. So in conclusion, we proposed an approach to improve intercomponent communication modeling in Android apps. So we have seen and we demonstrated that REC was able to boost existing static analyzers um, and that those atypical ICC methods were, were pervasive in Android apps. And uh, of course, to support uh, Open Science, REC and the benchmark, and on our, all our results are available online in this repository. So thank you for attending this presentation. And if you have any question, I would be glad to answer it right after this presentation. Thank you. OK, so we're live with the Q&A. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Francisco Cervant. I'm going to be chairing the discussion today. 
for this paper, and we have Jordan Sami, who's gonna Hello, answer your questions. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. He's, yeah, so he's at the University of Luxembourg, and um, so um, I, I so that, yeah. Now, so for the audience, you should ask your questions in the chat, and uh, and we will go over them. So I want to give a few minutes so that I give priority to the audience to ask their questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No question yet. <laughs> yeah, so let me let me get the conversation started. So that because often when I ask you things like people will may have follow ups or mm -hmm. think of new things. So um, in your in your paper, you have a specific definition of atypical intercomponent communication, right? So you you have these these characteristics, right? So. What I wanted to ask you is more, say, for the future, um, do you think that you will eventually have to refine that description or create, you know, or uh, like, do you, do you expect that a new definition of atypical will happen in a few years and then you have to sort of rethink the whole thing? Uh, actually, yeah, that is a very good question because we thought about it. Um, the definition we give in the paper is um, has been defined from what we observed uh, right. for, yeah during some reverse engineering and that's how we uh, were able to discover more than a hundred um, atypical uh, intercomponent communication methods but of course there are maybe other ways to perform those atypical uh, ICC and we have not found it yet but yeah in the future that's possible um, I think we mentioned this point in the limitation section. I'm, not, I'm yeah, yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, it should be. But uh, yeah, 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 of course, there are maybe other ways to do it. Right. So your goal is not to necessarily capture all possible atypical. Uh, no, 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 because but... we we have no idea about the whole the whole method. So this is not holistic, but mm -hmm. this was systematic. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so um, while we wait for more questions from the audience, I'll, yeah, I'll ask do, you another. Do not, do not hesitate Thanks. to ask questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so the other thing that I wanted to ask you is, is also related more to, to the future. Um, so what do you think, in your opinion, and even what you learned here, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think Android should do about these atypical intercomponent communications is is the solution to make these communications more typical or is there, so do you think this should be documented and sort of adopted or should mm. they modify it so they follow the typical rules like what's a Actually, better solution in my opinion I would not say that those methods should be let's say typical because they they have a clear purpose for example the send text message method has been defined to send a message but it happens that it can be also used to perform ICC because it is let's say a feature uh, so I would say that it should be more documented because if you uh, if you pay very uh, let's say precise attention uh, on the documentation, you will have the information, but it is, I would say it is not well known. We didn't find anything on the state of the art uh, on this. So that's why we, we, we were very interested in this. And actually, um, there is a, an interesting result in the paper is that we did not find some malicious activity uh, with those atypical uh, ICC method. Uh, for example, um, for leaking data, um, a malicious developer could have used those uh, those atypical ICC that ha that were not modeled in the literature, uh, but we did not find any. So maybe even the malware developer will, were not aware of this. We don't know, but this is an hypothesis. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's it's possible that you mm. found these um, vulnerabilities before the bad guys did. 
Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I, w I wouldn't say so, but maybe. Mm. That's in very. We were very interesting in in this study. So then I heard you say that you're not. Then instead of restricting these communications, you would rather document them to have them more in the open. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. More documentation and maybe make the the developer more aware of the potential of those methods mm -hmm. when they so are developing, for example. Mm -hmm. So they also understand the kind of data that they're sending over there. Yes. Yeah. Because if there is uh, sensitive data, so you pass sensitive data into another component, if it's not model, you cannot detect it. So that's, a, that's an important problem. Yeah. Um, OK, uh, so I, I, I'm going to leave a, um, a bit more time to see if the audience has more questions. I don't want to just take all your time. <laughs> um, but if we don't get um, more questions in in a minute or so, um, we it's, it's also fine to, to just wrap up here. And and if people ask, think of questions after this Q&A time finishes, yeah, I, I will be I, available. Yeah. I encourage them to join the discussion room of, for your paper mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that they can sure. find. Um, they, they will be in, invited to join that room after this Q&A finishes. OK, great. Thank you for, for the question. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, interesting. And one. I'm actually glad that someone is interested in, in, in my work. I'm very proud of it. So. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so since we only have a few minutes left, I think I'm gonna we're going to wrap up here. Mm -hmm. uh, we can leave the room. And, and anybody who may want to ask you questions later, they can join the discussion room for your paper. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jordan. Thank you, Francisco. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Good morning.